Was this part of the Marvel universe? The hot scientist lady needs to like assemble the team. And she goes and hires a Discord moderator. <laughs> Well, well, well. Look at you, movie lover. You stumbled upon my little cafe. Godzilla. What's the name of the movie? Uh, Godzilla. No, X Kong. I think it's Kong X Godzilla. Godzilla the New Empire. Empire. Okay. So, Godzilla X Kong or Kong X Godzilla the New <laughs> Empire. And, uh, yeah, that's what today's episode is going to be on. Here is our unofficial Cafe Critique official movie review. My name is Celestino Dooley. This is Brittany Loudon. Brittany and Loudon. I, I love the movie. It was awesome. I definitely also love the movie. Yeah. My first thoughts going into it were sparse. Just because I've never seen a Godzilla movie before. And I also didn't watch the trailer. But what I did see was a bunch of clips on social media. And that's all I need because I think the beauty of a movie like a Godzilla movie is the story's good. That's not what matters though, right? Yeah. What matters is giant monsters <laughs> opening up a fresh can of whoop ass on other monsters. Yeah. I had seen this trailer probably about like six, seven times at this point, And wow. I thought it was dumb every single freaking time. Could not be more wrong. I really sat there and I was like, really? Another Godzilla movie? Another King Kong movie? How many of these can you make? So basically the summary of the movie is... So you immediately go into this movie being like, okay, they just got beef. Like It starts with Kong fighting those, those dogs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the story of two very menacing creatures going at each other um but those two menacing creatures then having an opposing enemy um and they kind of just joined together there's a lot more to it it was clear that there was some prerequisite that i had missed out on yeah um but i mean really and this is what's nice about me not seeing anything else before is that <laughs> if that's also you I'll, t I'll tell you right now, you're still going to, I feel like you're still going to love it. Yeah, there's some plot points that you might miss out on, you know, some characters that clearly have some sort of relationship that was established in a previous movie, mm -hmm. but they explain everything, really. They, no, they don't do. really, they hit all the points. yeah, they, they don't really skip anything. <laughs> um, here's my brief kind of summary of the movie. It's pretty much just like every movie. It follows the iconography of the hero's journey mm -hmm. to a T. Hero gets introduced. Hero is happy. Hero is sought after something. Hero is in trouble. Hero gets hurt. Hero falls. Mm -hmm. Hero lives. Hero rises. Conquers. Hero gets stronger. Hero uh hero wins right so and that hero is really just kong and the humans so our opinions i mean what else is there more to say right it's a fun movie um i just have to nerd out here real quick the most exciting <laughs> the most the reason why i was most excited to see this was because one of my passions and not just doing but learning and watching is sound design I think there is nothing cooler on this earth than being able to make the sounds that we heard in that movie with ordinary objects. So my spoiler free opinions would be that the storytelling, I would say, was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Going into it thinking it was dumb, I was pleasantly surprised. I did get emotional during the movie. <laughs> so yeah, I definitely cried oh for gosh. two seconds. Seriously? Yeah, I'm being so serious. Oh, that's awesome. What is your score for the spoiler free uh half of this i at, think at, out, out of 100 of a, i would give it a 75 yeah, you would give it a 75 but All that right. is because spoiler free. it got me to the emotional like point where i was like Dang, okay like i would say spoiler free and i don't think mine is going to change in the spoiler zone mm. because i don't think it's a perfect movie there are definitely issues with it i i would give it somewhere in the 80s Okay. But I don't I don't know where it's leaning. I would probably just, just say eighty six. 
because I like it more than just going halfway, but it, I don't think it deserves to go even close to 90. Yeah, I give it an 86. You give it a 75. So up on the screen now, that is our uh, that is our soft locking score right now for the spoiler free. And right now starts the countdown to the spoiler zone. If you haven't watched it, you can come back and watch the second half. Tell us why, you know, why bread baked with brown sugar is tastier than bread baked without. And we will see you guys <laughs> later. But for the people who want spoilers, here we go. So chronological order, play by play. So the movie starts out with Kong fighting these zombie dogs. I only say zombie because they looked like zombies, but they they're, it, it was really just, they were just dilapidated. But Kong's fighting these dogs. You are introduced to Kong's home, which is Hollow Earth, something I don't under... You never watched the movie. I don't understand, yeah. The center of the Earth. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but... That's basically what Hollow Earth know. is. But Dwayne The Rock Johnson wasn't there. So, <laughs> fighting dogs, you're introduced to Kong's home. It goes up to the human world. We see all these scientists. They clearly have this huge monitoring system on Kong and Godzilla. And apparently there are other kaijus on Earth, mm -hmm. which is crazy because it's like, isn't this what you guys are all scared of? A, a literal monster yeah. that, that could destroy the Earth. And you guys just know that there are like five in the Antarctic That's Ocean. That's where I think we missed a lot of Yeah, stuff. because it's like... Because how it, the freak... Because when they said, we found five in the Atlantic Ocean, at first I thought, holy shit, they're coming. <laughs> but then the scientist was like, we knew this all along. They are dormant. I'm like, people are going to the beach with this. The British are coming. Seriously. The I British was like, are coming. I was like, so clearly they've obviously gotten, like, they have something under control. But I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, there's five of them. <laughs> there's five. So, But they're all around the world. Yeah. So, so. Godzilla is like Earth's protector. They have a relationship with Godzilla, but not really. And Godzilla fights all the bad kaijus and goes sleeps in the Roman Colosseum. Yeah, which was cute. That was which adorable. Was so cute. Um, and then just to skip plot, plot, exposition, and then it does the very campy. We need to assemble a team. <laughs> so this is where my favorite part comes, where they get the scientist mom that I am. Uh, not wanting to admit is hotter than I thought I'd find her. They have like a Steve Irwin dude that probably sits to pee and a little girl who can only use sign language. And then... It's because she's deaf. Yeah. <laughs> then my favorite part, the hot scientist lady needs to like assemble the team to go to Hollow Earth, a place... We're like literal building sized monsters roam. They're taking this dinky little ship that the pilot dies 10 minutes after they land by a tree. <laughs> and she goes and hires a discord moderator <laughs> to go and to go with them. Because uh, again, this is something that we missed in a previous movie. I believe he, Save he, pre he, pre yeah, he predicted something that. All the other scientists never predicted, and he was recording a podcast, which makes me feel like a loser. <laughs> when I when I saw when I saw that, I'm like, man, I should probably just dissolve <laughs> the brand now. Uh, he's playing the awkward, you know, like mastermind loser kind of role, and she brings him on. She lets him go to Hollow Earth, but before that, they have. Uh, they re they replace one of Kong's teeth and they go back through this portal to Hollow Earth. And here's the other thing. Like, they have outposts in Hollow Earth. So what I said earlier about, like, kaijus being on Earth and they're just all okay with it. That outpost did not even have windows. How did you catch that? <laughs> because I was just like, we have all this, like... We are monitoring Godzilla's heartbeat in the exact instance before his thought. And then you go to the, the base in Hollow Earth and it's like, it's a porta potty. Yeah, basically. And, yeah. and it's, it's just like, this is literally a land where creatures the size of buildings roam and kill anything that moves. And you guys know that, yet your outpost is smaller than my studio apartment with like what looks like no defenses and then they're all shocked when it gets crushed and everyone's killed it's like of course <laughs> like you set up a tent 
in like Nam. I don't know that 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 part kind of pissed me off. And then we got this ca- this freaking this freaking airplane guy, this airplane captain flying, the, you know, and he's just kind of like, "All right, Mike, you follow my rules right now." Blah, 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 blah. And of course, like the he has, which I saw from a mile away, the whole like was yelling at the Discord mod like, "You need to you need to shape up, soldier, because I'm the one in control here, and this is my freaking ship." And the 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 tree has a mouth and eats him. He dies, and then so okay, so okay, <laughs> skip go. ahead. All this exposition and them traveling, they they dig deeper into Hollow Earth, deeper, deeper. They find this tribe of the little deaf girl, and they put they put you know they they put crayons on their forehead. You're missing and, so much right now. And then hold on, and then <laughs> so they they do this and they talk with tele- telepathy, mm-hmm. and then there's. They like are hidden behind this secret wall away from the kaiju's, which is why people thought that the Iwi people, stupid name, the Iwi people were dead, and the girl was all this stuff. No, Mothra put up this giant wall of like bioluminescent, you know, web. Skin. Yeah, and they find them, and then there's a bunch of big fights. The I think the villain was freaking awesome. That dude was cool. That dude was cool, but the thing is, the is Scar honestly, King. I thought he would be a lot bigger, in my opinion. Me too. But I think what really helped him was the fact that he was controlling one of mm-hmm. the Titan things, an, but an a, ancient, yeah, an and ancient one powerful. that one that doesn't like want to kill things. Yeah, no, yeah. literally, just started. They literally say it in the movie. Started the a- ice age on Earth. Yeah. Like, what? And this thing is still around? And then this man is literally controlling it by his whip that he has. Because he has one, one of, of the scales. One of the shards. It's it's either a scale or it's part of the quartz. Because that's where I'm assuming that creature came from that's controlling them. But the thing is, is that whenever he, like... Whipped, right, like, yeah, he would do it. And she would, she, she she would, would, she would sh- be like, ah. Yeah, like in pain. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I thought the villain would be bigger. So it's the yeah. Scar King. So basically, you get introduced to Scar King, right? But then you see like these glowing eyes in the dark, and you're like, "This that's, dude is big." That's, that's the bigger villain. Like this that's who's big. gonna be like the person that they're gonna try to kill. Mm-hmm. No, it's just this freaking other size King Kong sized ape. Yes, I thought he was gonna be bigger and badder, but I'm okay with it because I think what made him even more villainous to me was like his attitude and the yeah. way that he walked he was super cool yeah like no, he would sure. wa- he would walk around with his shoulders behind him like looking at people with his head cocked up because he 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 knows he could just rip them in in half and that's why i wasn't because yeah when i first saw him I, I was like okay it's it's an it's an anorexic monkey but <laughs> you know but when he started moving and talking i it, i was actually no this is this villain is perfect because He's the same size as Kong, but he clearly has this other side to him, this authority. So basically what we learn later in the story is the apes were the guardians of the humans on Earth and the Godzilla was the guardians of the kaijus on Hollow Earth. But then Kong slid into Godzilla's girlfriend's DMs and then <laughs> Godzilla got matched with Godzilla, went to Earth and then all the creatures on Hollow Earth go, ah! And then the apes got banished to Hollow Earth and then even lower to the subterranean realm yep. in this giant lava scape. Yep. And that's where they got banished to. You know, obviously now they're all going crazy. They're all trapped there. Some start rising up and then that's where the Scar King comes from is one of the apes out of the bunch decided, you know what, I'm going to run this place. And he became like monkey Hitler. And then <laughs> Godzilla's up on Earth now. Kong is in Hollow Earth, and Mothra is the mother of all kaijus. Like, Mothra, or Titans, she can, like, do anything. Like, yeah, Mo- absolutely. Mothra yeah. is, like, sway queen. But Mothra is, like, not awakened. She's, like, sleeping or trapped, or she's in hibernation or whatever. The only way you- Mothra can be awakened is if in Eerie from Skull Island, I actually watched Kong Skull Island. 
like really? six years ago. Oh, so true. that was Skull Island. The, apparently this little girl who can only speak in sign language is from Skull Island. And apparently only an eerie from Skull Island can awaken her. She draws on her forehead and walks up this giant thing of stairs and uh and just thinks just just thinks real hard and then (laughs) mothra's awakened so then mothra it's like okay great well what to do now because now the scar the scar king and the ice lizard are making their way to they're trying to make their way to earth which is like horrible because as long as the scar king controls ice lizard he can put a new ice age on the entire planet and he can take it over so now girl says to kong we need help and that wasn't explained. Apparently Kong just knew what she was talking about. So Kong's like, I need to go get Godzilla, my main enemy, because me and him can team up and stop him. But Godzilla hates me. So he, he goes up there and they him and Godzilla fight because Kong's like, dude, dude, truce, truce, truce. And Godzilla's like, Argh. and then they, they fight for like five minutes. And then Mothra, meow, Mothra comes in and like, stop. And <laughs> they cool. both just stop and kiss, I guess. And then the Scar King and the Ice Lizard, after, because all of them fight in hollow earth for like 10 minutes. It was awesome. But then all of them make it to earth. Scar King's on earth. Ice Lizard's on earth. Everyone is on earth and they're all fighting. And Scar King still has control of the Ice Lizard and he's about to pull the trigger and kill everyone. But Kong and Godzilla and, Mo- and Mothra keep fighting back. Blah, blah, blah. And then little tiny, tiny Tim chimpanzee comes around and... And he's like, he's like, ho, 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 He's like this 10, this 10 foot monkey, whereas everyone else is like 30, 30 freaking stories. And, you know, little tiny Tim chimpanzee comes along and the shard that he controls the ice lizard falls. So then tiny Tim takes the ax and, and then destroys the shard and they all team up on Scar King and then Hitler dies and Germany's back. And then they all go back to where they belong. And then we don't even see anything after that. I was like, it literally ended on like them back in the ship and then the credits roll. I would have liked to see maybe where Kong ended up, where Godzilla ended up, just because Kong and Godzilla are good now. That changes so much. They literally, they had to be separated by entire worlds because they hated each other so much. But now they're fine. That obviously is going to change some things. We didn't get to see any of that. We we didn't get to see the little deaf girl be happy back on Earth. I would have liked to see that. I would have yeah. liked to see what she did with her time on Earth instead of staying with her tribe. I would have liked to see the podcast loser maybe, you know, um, start working for Monarch, yeah. maybe. Like, maybe be or- there actually people believe in him because that was like yeah. the whole entire thing is that people didn't believe in him so he's going around with his camera like the whole entire time recording yeah. everything it would have been nice to see him maybe go back to earth because there was this point where steve Irwin ripoff was like oh, i might you might not want to record all this mate because last time we did that an untouched civilization got destroyed and we think the beauty of it is when no one knows it would have been nice to maybe see him take his advice at the end of the movie and it would have been so satisfying to see the discord mod the loser guy it would have been so nice to actually see him in real life and have made the decision not to show anyone which shows character development you know he finally realizes that it's okay if not everyone likes me i don't i don't need to prove it i'm smart that would have been so nice but no they got in the ship they put it into drive and then the credits started rolling so that's my that's that's the summary. Uh, let's talk about criteria now, right? I'm just gonna go down the list that we have: visuals, ten out of ten; storytelling, eight out of ten; character de- development, five out of ten; mm. pacing, eight out of ten; ending, seven out of ten. Right. Um, visuals, ten out of ten; storytelling, mm-hmm. a good eight out of ten. The character development, 4 out of 10. Yeah, it was barely there. Yeah. Um, the pacing, 5 out of 10. Yeah. The ending, 0 out of 10. Yeah. Well, I did I, like, I the, I I mean, like the final end scene like of them fighting and everything like that. So yeah. maybe I changed that to like a 4 out of 10. But yeah. the thing is, is that not seeing anything afterwards, exactly. like you're saying, really changes the whole dynamic. Because you're like, oh, oh my gosh, they really did it. Yay. The end. Yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. like thank you for you that. <laughs> didn't even see them celebrate they, they literally just got in the ship and then the credits rolled yeah um 
Yeah, I would say, yeah, because I I gave ending a bad score too, but I would say everything that we were allowed to see at the very mm-hmm. end was fine. So that's why it's not a zero out of ten for me. Yeah. Honestly, we probably should add acting to that list. It's really hard to say because this whole movie was nothing but you know CGI, right? Which looked amazing. Yeah. But what acting is there? It's just the humans. I would say, I mean, acting would be like a, like a five, five, six from acting what we me. did get to see. I thought the acting was pretty like mid. I mean, yeah. like you don't really get to like dive deep into the characters and everything like that besides the deaf girl. And that's where it's kind of it. like, yeah. okay. They're probably banking out the fact that people had already seen the previous ones. Yeah, so they're like, true. we don't need a whole lot of character exposition here yeah. because they've already got it. The other point that I was going to bring up is that an ending like this, someone could say, because there is a right way and a wrong way to do an ambiguous ending. There is. Mm -hmm. There are 10 out of 10 endings that are completely ambiguous. For example, the anime Cowboy Bebop, the most ambiguous ending I've ever seen, and it was perfect. A loser online could say that this was an ambiguous ending. You could see it that way. And really, I guess it was an ambiguous ending. not at all like it was the wrong kind of ambiguous ambiguous endings are meant to give you the answer to everything except for one one question and it's basically forcing you to use all of that knowledge to think of what what you think the answer to that final final question was they didn't give us anything has your score changed Honestly, yeah. You were at a 75. Where are you at now? I would give it a 65. Yeah. 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 It went lower. I yeah. don't know why it which, went lower since we started talking about Which it. is still above half. 65 isn't a bad a bad, yeah. a bad, score. Because I still, like, my, my, in, my enjoyment of the movie was a 100 out of 100. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Yeah. My enjoyment of it was 100 out of, a, oh, yeah. of 100. Enjoyment, 100 out of 100. But my score, I said 86. I'll give way and I'll just do 85 because I think the ending is the worst part. Yeah. So here's our final score um, for Kong versus Conor McGregor, the <laughs> new empire. That's what it was, dude. The whole movie was just like an like a UFC fighter's yeah. wet, like wet, wet dream. dream. King Kong... Hayakaya Ramad Godzilla into Oh my gosh, in, that was in crazy. King <laughs> Kong literally suplexed Wait. Godzilla <laughs> on the pyramids. And then and then Kong was like he was like who shuffling and he just <laughs> threw Eric. Sane and Godzilla's eyes. Godzilla's like who I'm like, this is way too human. Like what like it was so like Kong literally is a human. Like like I'm pretty sure Dave but ba- Dave Batista mo capped for Kong and John Cena mo capped for Godzilla. Yeah. Because once they got to Egypt, it was it just was, a UFC yeah, match. No, was. not even UFC. It was a WWE match. Mm-hmm. I was waiting for the damn Undertaker to come in, which he basically did. He was the Scar King. I have a soft 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 spot for historical monuments and every fight pyramids gone uh uh uh, the roman coliseum gone (laughs) like they just they would just they would just destroy like monuments and that's like i have such a soft spot for that kind of stuff and godzilla uses it to like Take blind Godzilla or like to like <laughs> to jump off like wrestlers jump off the bungee cords of the ring. Yeah. <laughs> and the final thing before we end this episode I want to bring up was I like to, you know, I don't care who's around. I will I will not stop making jokes if I think of them. Uh and it's even funnier when strangers hear it just to see their reaction. You know, so when the credits started rolling, you know, there's always that that low hanging fruit joke of like I leaned over to Brittany, I was like, dude Dude, we gotta stay for the end for the end oh credit scene. You don't know gosh. if like if like Dr. Fury's gonna come and like recruit Kong into the Avengers. And the lady next to us goes, <laughs> Wait, was this part of the Marvel universe? Oh my god. Forty years old, late forties. And I was like I was like, I don't know if she's joking. I said, Yeah, 
It is. And she was like, seriously? I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> and then I said, I said, yeah, yeah. And the sequel, actually, Captain America teams up with, with Kong to take on Red Skull and, and, and freaking oh, Putin. My and she says, again, wait, so it, so it is a part of the Marvel Universe? <laughs> like, I don't care if you've never seen any Marvel movie. You can't avoid it. Everyone knows the story or the characters, even if you've never watched it, just because they're just they're 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 pushed out so hard. So it's like, how are you in a movie theater seeing every ad and every trailer for every Marvel movie, and you actually for a second question or not if Godzilla and Kong are a part of the Stanley universe? Brittany whisked me away. She grabbed my wrist and pulled me. I was like, come on. Because <laughs> I would have kept, I would have kept he going. He would have kept trolling her. For oh, sure. it was amazing! Yeah. It was amazing. And then I'm walking out there. You know, Papa's got to pee, and and I, I am, hol- I am holding it in so so much. And I get to the bathroom, and the the line is like spiraling out. So I look at one of the well, at one of the Spanish dudes, <laughs> and I said, "Man, my my walls are stronger, man. I'm gonna take." I said, "I'm gonna take this fight home," and he was like. I just kind of, I just kind of winked at him and then walked away. I'm um, remember standing there like, yeah, let's just go. <sighs> I feel like I should talk about the part where I was emotional. Oh yeah, um, yeah. What? You know, I love a good mother daughter scene. You know, where they're like, you're such a you, woman. You are my home. You are my home, mother. I was watching that like, man, shut up, get back to the. I'm fighting. over here like. <laughs> I'm, and they built a Thanos gauntlet for Kong. Yes. Oh my God. That's... How did we miss that? Okay. They you built a that. Tha- a tha- <laughs> they built a Thanos. They built a So Kong gets frostbite because apparently freaking Titans can have the same ailments yeah. that humans do. The only times Kong got got so injured that he couldn't fight was a toothache and frostbite. He got suplexed into the pyramids pyramids yeah and this man still and or this monkey uh, is still standing this monkey is still standing the only the only injuries that actually took him out of the fight were a toothache <laughs> and frostbite and frostbite dude you are a giant gorilla Everything also in. so many people died so many people died the scientists are, are like they are doing more for us than you than you can possibly Ever understand. Imagine. Whereas, like one punch for Kong kills an entire lineage. Like, th- like he just he picks up a skyscraper and throws it. That's Boom. an in- that's like that's like eight hundred people. I think we've covered everything. I think we covered everything. Um, I would like to say that again. Me and Celestino are not professional movie critics. Um, um so we are official, <laughs> cool movie critics oh yeah no not Very official cool. movie critics but we are officially cool movie critics oh yeah with with completely biased opinions and no recollection of the previous movies in the line that's why you come here to nice. get the opinion that no one wants to hear thank you for coming back to the cafe critique this is episode two of kong uh and you know kong and conor mcgregor fight it out for the championship belt and I've been Celestino Dooley. And I am Brittany Loudon. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see y'all later. Peace out.